All right, let's get right into this, folks. I'm going to make myself clear. Pastor Jack Hibbs is under attack again. Let me say that one more time. He's under attack again. You remember what he did a few weeks ago. Let me just show you a portion of this, right? And by the way, this is classic Jack Hibbs. He's never changed, but here he is in the House, the United States House of Representatives, after being asked by the Speaker of the House to go pray. And I'm just going to show you the first few seconds of his prayer. And then I'm going to comment on because the government is weaponizing itself against Jack Hibbs. And I'm going to show you this in just a second. But watch this nonsense. Watch what they do to Pastor Jack after him this it this is crazy, but let's just get into how it all started. Let's just do that, okay? This is him in the House of Representatives actually praying. Let's watch this for just a second. The House will be in order. The prayer will be offered by the guest chaplain, Pastor Jack Hibbs, Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, Chino, California. But you got that? Guest chaplain, meaning he was invited. Guest chaplain, okay? Here we go. Let's pray. Almighty God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, together we come before you in humility. Right away, they labeled him a terrorist because he came in the name of Jesus Christ. They're calling him a Christian nationalist as though that's a bad name, right? They're saying, they're blaming him, by the way, for January 6th because he said the next few words. Watch this. As a people in need of your forgiveness, your mercy, your goodness, and your grace. For these 250 so years, our fathers in this Congress have prayed for your guidance and protection. And so we stand here in humble petition that you today might do the same. That this nation and its unparalleled constitution your great gift to all freedom-loving people might be renewed here. And There's a problem. Your great gift to freedom-loving people might be renewed. Why do they hate that? I'll tell you why they hate that. They hate that because they continue to create a picture of people who love Jesus as individuals who are literal terrorists. That's what they're doing. And the media is complicit and helping them begin to do this again and again and again and again. You guys see it, it happens, and it's absolutely ridiculous. Now, with all that said, Pastor Jack is under attack. I showed you the baloney letter that they wrote concerning him. We talked all about that. I did a video. You can go to that video and watch it. I spent an hour making a case for why what Jack did was perfectly legal. But let's get into a bigger picture here. That is, now they're watching what Jack does in his church services. They're literally watching what he does in church, and now they're trying to tell him what to do because he did something that they say he shouldn't have done. How about we start this off by me showing you the news report that talks about how bad Jack Hibbs is. What a terrible man. What an evil man for doing what he did. And we're going to get into this, folks, because I think this is critically important. And get ready, put on your law school student hats, because we are going to talk about something very important in just a second, and I think it's going to be eye-opening. So let's watch this news report, because this is just astounding. The pastor's comments during that recent sermon making lots of headlines, a lot of controversy here after he encouraged the congregation to vote Republican. First of all, you liar. You fake news liar. He said nothing about voting Republican. He actually encouraged everybody to vote for Steve Garvey. And by the way, you should if you're in California because Adam Schiff is a lying, I, I'm not even gonna get into it. He's a traitor to his own people. He's a traitor to Israel. He's a traitor 
to the United States of America. He hates God and he hates you. So I'm telling you this right now, Steve Garvey is absolutely the way to go. And I don't care what anybody says, Jack has the right to do that. So, oh, he encouraged them to vote Republican. There's a whole bunch of people that are Republicans that I would never tell you to vote for and Jack would never tell you to vote for. So I'm gonna make myself very clear. You've lost your mind, you crazy lady. But let's go on. Here we go. Oh yeah, by the way, yeah, I'm mad. And you know what? You should be mad too. You should be bothered by this nonsense. I want to publicly right now today encourage all of you to vote for Steve Garvey. I just remember, it's against the law for me to say that in the pulpit. So as a, as a public citizen, Steve Garvey is not only one of the greatest baseball players of all time, but we want Steve Garvey to represent us in the Senate. You see? You see what they're trying to do? Oh, Jack Hibbs, he told us to vote Republican. Oh, yeah. You, you get that? You see they're liars? They are fake news. They're liars and they're straight out manipulators. Jack Hibbs didn't for one second say, not for one second, vote Republican. He said, hey, I want to endorse Steve Garvey. By the way, Mr. Potato Head would be better than Adam Schiff. Adam Schiff has lost his mind. We all know that. That guy is akin to the devil, okay? Let me just simply say that. Him and Gavin Newsom, they're perfect friends. But I digress. So let's continue on with the fake news story. Yeah, you see it there. This video was posted to X, and that's Pastor Jack Hibbs. He leads a mega church here in Chino and told the congregation to endorse GOP Senate candidate Steve Garvey. He said he believes God wants a candidate who is pro-life. This is ahead of the March 5th election, where Garvey is the leading Republican candidate in California's Senate primary. And by the way, God does want a uh, candidate who is pro-life. You darn straight. God doesn't want candidates who will kill babies. Come on, let's get real here. And by the way, Adam Schiff, we need to pray right now that Adam Schiff doesn't have a chance in the next election. We need to be, we need to pray that he is gone. Like literally that God removes him by bringing in somebody who will literally lead righteously. This is crazy. Now, during his comments to this large congregation, it's unclear the exact number that day, but more than 10,000 people are members of this church. Pastor Hibbs admitted he broke the law through his political appeal. He said it's against the law. For By the way, I want to make myself clear, you liar. Jack Hibbs did not admit to breaking the law. Jack Hibbs was uniquely and distinctly sarcastic. That's exactly what it was. It was sarcasm. Let me read something to you. Heck, I don't even need to read it to you. Let me just simply quote to you what the First Amendment of the Constitution says. It says this. It's simple. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. But let me just back up and go right to the first part of what the First Amendment says. One more time, you ready? Put this in your memory, folks. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, ready, or abridging the freedom of speech. Jack was doing exactly that, just like I do and lots of pastors who are willing to be bold and not fall to the lies of the enemy in the government. What Jack was doing was really simple. Jack was literally, literally, freely exercising his religion. My religion is the worship of Jesus Christ to be a fundamentalist of the Bible. The same religion as Jack Hibbs. He is my brother, my fellow servant in the Lord, and we are freely exercising our religion by speaking out against abortion, by speaking out against murder, and by explaining the moral 
and biblical obligation that people have to vote for righteous men who will stand up for these little babies. So don't you dare for one second get on any idea that Jack admitted to the fact that what he was doing was illegal. He was being sarcastic. And if you don't know any better, then guess what? You're going to find out when you go to the Supreme Court and you lose your rears on this one. I'm sorry. You've lost your mind. Okay? You've lost your mind. Let's continue on with the lies. For him to say this in the pulpit. He then pointed out that he has the right to make this endorsement as a citizen rather than from the church. Many have criticized the pastor saying, By the way, again, you liar, he was being sarcastic. He has the right to say it as a citizen and he has the right to say it as a pastor of the church. He has the right to say it any way he wants to say it because he has the freedom of speech. He has the laws that protect him. He, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. How many more times do I have to say this? There is no separation of church and state. Okay, go study the letter with the Danbury Baptist Association, and then maybe you might be able to understand what's going on here. But this is ridiculous. And by the way, you guys understand it perfectly well. I'm just venting. This is just nuts. I, I, these people are liars. They are fake news. They continue to be fake news. You liars. You're not even framing the issue correctly. I think he should not be addressing his congregation in a political manner since churches are prohibited from partaking in certain political activities. Churches are not prohibited, you liar. Churches, listen, politics emanate from the pulpit. Politics start in essence from what comes out of the mouth of pastors. When pastors shut their mouths, politics get dirty. When pastors speak up, everything changes. Wake up, church. Wake up. If we don't wake up, we're going to lose everything. We are going to lose our children to these drag queens in the library. We are going to lose our babies in the womb before they come out of these mothers. Think about this, folks. We are in a battle for truth. We are in a battle for righteousness. The foundation of this government was designed. Our forefathers were given to the idea of protecting not only free speech, but the Liberty that we have to be able to freely worship the Lord. Do not listen to these liars. And I can tell you this right now. I know Jack. I've known Jack for over 30 years. Jack's been my friend the whole time. And I can tell you this right now. He was being sarcastic up there. He wasn't saying, oh my gosh, I just broke the law. So I need to stand up in front of the pulpit outside and just say, I'm a citizen. I got to say this now. I'm a citizen. God, what are you talking about, bro? What do you think? He's Brian Broderson or something? Come on. I, I, just wake up. I, this is so crazy. We really have to think through this a little bit. Guys, it's time to stand up. If they want to hold on to their status as tax-exempt nonprofits, and endorsing or donating to a specific political candidate is a violation. The organization Freedom From Religion Foundation is pushing the IRS to take action against the pastor. We sent a letter uh, yesterday uh, to the IRS about Calvary Chapel Chino Hills uh, violating IRS law with regard to either elections or uh, politicking. Um, it seems pretty clear that uh, Mr. Hibbs wants to be involved in politics. He wants to be a political figure. That seems to be very important to him. Uh, he can do so. Actually, liar, it's not clear that he wants to be a political figure. Liar. Jack Hibbs wants to be the pastor that God has called him to be. And pastors are not called to be cowards. Pastors are called to stand up and to tell the truth. And that's exactly what Jack Hibbs was doing. You hate God. And because you hate God, you're going to do everything you can to shut the mouths of anybody who stands up for God. And by the way, hold on to the seat of your pants, folks. Pop the popcorn. Because I'm going to, on the fly, read this letter that I have not read before. And I'm going to tear it to pieces. Okay? Okay. I'm, I'm going to just tell you this right now. This is bogus nonsense. And folks, I don't know about you, but I do know the law. I'm very well aware of the law. I'm very well versed in the law. And I can tell you this right now. There is no law in this except a bunch of lies. Okay? I'm going to say that. I'll make myself very, very clear. But let's continue to listen to attorney Chris Line. He does it outside of the church. He cannot use his church. A uh, 501c3 entity that's not allowed to politic, it's not allowed to get involved in elections. Not allowed to politic, not allowed to get involved in elections. Are you nuts? Are you, do you understand, you kook, that literally 
50, maybe even 70% of the election sites in this country are churches. You understand people go to churches still to this day to go vote? Separation of church and state only when it's convenient to you? How about the Obamas when they go to a first AME church and come out with a big old speech? Or Fannie Willis, she gets up there at a church and talks about how I'm going to get Trump, right? Oh, that's, uh, that's, that's political discourse. She can't do that. No, it's because... It's really simple. You look at this because you don't like the message that Jack shares because the message that Jack shares lines up with the scriptures and you hate the conviction of the Holy Spirit. It's really simple. This is ridiculous. And I'm telling you, folks, we need to see this for what it is. It's a lie. It's a farce. And that's the attorney from that organization outlining the steps that they're taking uh, by contacting the IRS. I want to point out that we made repeated attempts to reach Pastor Hibbs here. We called him by phone. We even showed up at the church. We were asked to leave the property by security. So now we are in another location um, across the street. But uh, his secretary, the pastor. I would write. I would in a heartbeat ask you to leave the property because y'all are liars. And there's no way you're going to tell the truth. It's like telling the devil to come inside your house. I'm not having the devil come into my house. Hey, God, you go deal with that devil. That's exactly what I would do. So sorry. Yeah, you're not welcome. Secretary told us that he's not commenting at this time. We did, however, speak to a member of the congregation, a woman who was uh, at church that day. She listened to this entire sermon. She heard the pastor's appeal. She has very, very um, strong statements regarding um, his push to have the congregation vote Republican. She says she fully supports the pastor and that this back. See, what a liar. You see the subtlety? She really strongly uh, uh, believes in the push that Jack is making to vote Republican. Liar! You saw the video, right? Look, I, I, I'm just telling you, there are massive differences between the Republican and the Democratic Party. And I can tell you this right now. There's no way you can be a member of the Democratic Party and believe the things of the Democratic Party, there's lots of people that are members of the Democratic Party that love the Lord, but don't understand what they actually believe. But once you understand what they believe and you identify yourself with them, no way you're a Christian. You can't have the spirit of God living inside of you. I'm sorry. Listen, there's a lot of jacked up, unsaved Republicans too. Believe me, there are some messed up ones that are out there. Sit down and have a conversation with warmongering Lindsey Graham. I'll tell you all about that, right? There's a whole bunch of those guys like that too, okay? This is not me defending any one party. This is me saying we have the right to defend defend righteousness that we be we have the right to be able to tell people hey this is the person you should stand behind you liar backlash that he's receiving is undeserved so you'll hear from her coming up in the next hour that's the latest here in chino kareen winter ktla 5 news back to you in the studio thank you kareen I, I just I, i'm so sorry but this is absolutely crazy so how about we do this let me quickly read through this letter here and i'm going to try to compose myself as i do it but let me just simply read this because i think it's really really important that we have a very simple discussion regarding this letter i'm going to be very brief with it right it's addressed to the irs and it says this i am writing on behalf of the freedom from religion foundation to report ongoing illegal political campaigning by calvary chapel chino hills located at 4201 Eucalyptus Avenue, Chino, California, 91710. FFRF is a national nonprofit organization with more than 40,000 members across the country. Our purposes are to protect the constitutional principle of separation between state and church and to educate the public on matters relating to non-theism. By the way, can I just make myself very, very clear? You're not even quoting the Jefferson letter correctly, okay? First of all, you keep identifying this as a First Amendment issue, and I've said it before. Shall we do it again congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof okay uh, or abridging the freedom of speech there is nothing here that talks about a wall of separation between church and state not state and church as you stipulate in this letter you don't even know how to phrase what jefferson said when he talked to the danbury baptist association i've done lots of videos on this by the way we've talked about this extensively you guys are nuts you guys are wrong, okay? But we want to educate the public on matters related to non-theism. Okay, that's fine. You cannot believe in a God as you claim. By the way, your God is something else. You do put something as your God. It's just not the God of heaven. Uh, let's just make myself very, very clear. 
Okay, but look what he says. We previously wrote to the IRS on January 8th, 2018, regarding Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, posting of political signs. And on June 15th, 2022, regarding Jack Hibbs, leader of Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, openly endorsing Larry Elder, a candidate hoping to replace California Governor Gavin Newsom in a failed recall election attempt. You have to say failed recall election attempt, right? Pastor Hibbs allowed Elder to speak to his congregation. Okay. How many times has Gavin Newsom walked in a church where he's been allowed to speak to the congregation? How many times has the VP opened up her mouth with all kinds of word salad, right? Or the president for that matter in churches. It happens all the time. Let's make myself very, very clear, IRS, if you're listening to me. This guy doesn't like the fact that Jack Hibbs is endorsing somebody that he doesn't agree with, okay? You don't write letters on the AME leaders. You're not writing letters on Jesse Jackson. You ain't writing letters on the Ravs that are getting up there and allowing all this other nonsense to go through. You're not writing letters on these people that supposedly represent black America that want to bring in white oppressors like Joe Biden to come in and share the things that they share, You've lost your mind. You're a bunch of hypocrites, and you know you're a bunch of hypocrites. And if the IRS comes down on Jack Hibbs, then the IRS has to illegally come down on all of these other churches, like the AME churches and all the other black churches around the country that are bringing in white oppressors to come in and to bring lies to black people. Let's be real about this. Come on. I, I, I am not embarrassed to tell people the truth about what's going on. And I think there's a whole bunch of black families and black people that are opening up their eyes to see what's going on. And yes, I am first generation born and raised in this country to a mother and father who was born and raised in Egypt. Yes, that's an African country. And no way am I claiming by any stretch of the imagination that an immutable characteristic establishes my moral authority. What establishes my moral authority are the scriptures. So let's get real here for just one second, you liars. He's writing it like he's writing a false police report. On Sunday, February 25th, 2024, Pastor Jack Hibbs once again used his Sunday service to endorse a political candidate, telling his congregation to vote for Steve Harvey. Ha! <laughs> I said Steve Harvey! <laughs> Steve Garvey. I had to be funny about that. Steve Garvey. I did that on accident, but I just thought I'd laugh with it. Vote for Steve Garvey in the upcoming California primary. So they quote him. Ready? This is his quote. You guys watch the video, but I'll quote it anyway. I want to publicly, right now, today, encourage all of you to vote for Steve Garvey. You gotta vote for Steve Garvey. It's against the law for me to, I just remembered, it's against the law for me to say that in the pulpit, so dot, dot, dot. Then he stepped away from the pulpit before continuing. As a public citizen, Steve Garvey is not only one of the greatest baseball players of all time, but we want Steve Garvey to represent us in the Senate. And so Steve Garvey is your only, is the only guy on the ballot. Um, so there, that was legal. I just had to move from here to there. First of all, as I said before, Jack was being sarcastic and that sarcasm was a blast. That was fun to watch. It was funny because you know, just as well as I know that Jack knows what his first amendment right is. He knows what the first amendment right is of every single member of his church and every single citizen of, the, of, of not only the state of California, but the United States of America. Okay, let me make myself very clear. So he goes on to say FFRF is a registered 501c3 and it takes this designation along with the accompanying privileges and responsibilities very seriously. Some churches like Calvary Chapel's Chino Hills, by the way, FFRF is not a religious exempt organization, okay? There's a big difference between a religious exempt organization and his organization. He still has to knock out 990s and all the other nonsense that goes with that. This guy is a clown, okay? And if he is claiming that he's classified as a religious exempt organization, then the IRS needs to look into him. I'm going to make myself very clear. So they've chosen to make a mockery of their 501c3 status by reaping all of the benefits of tax exemption while knowingly violating the statute by openly endorsing political candidates running for public office. We would like to see the IRS take action on this issue and enforce its rules for the benefit of all taxpayers. For what benefit of all taxpayers? You're a liar. You yourself are a cult. OK, you're actually a, a devil loving organization that is seeking to take away free speech rights from anybody. That's what you're doing because they don't agree with you. The Internal Revenue Code states that to retain their 501c3 status, an organization cannot participate in or intervene in, including the publishing or distributing of statements, any political campaign on behalf of or in opposition to any candidate for public office. 
In this instant, Calvary Chapel Chino Hills has breached the responsibilities of its tax exempt status by openly endorsing a candidate for elective office. Can I just tell you this right now? Even in his interpretation of the terminology reflected in the code of the Internal Revenue Service, he's wrong. He's not even examining it objectively like it should. I could take that terminology alone. A uh, first year law student could take that terminology alone and argue that right out the door. We all know this. It all has to go to the Constitution. And unless the Constitution is amended, Jack Hibbs had the right to do what he did. We write to respectfully request that the IRS immediately investigate Calvary Cappuccino Hills and ensure that it no longer receives the benefits of a 501c3 status and that donations made to the church are no longer treated as tax deductible. The IRS should take appropriate action to remedy any violations of 501c3 regulations that occurred or which continue to occur. Thank you for your time and attention to this matter. Sincerely, Christopher Line, Staff Attorney, Freedom From Religion Foundation. I love staff attorneys for a whole bunch of reasons, but I'm, I'm just going to leave that alone. I'm going to say this, you guys. This is complete hogwash. Now, I want to read from a legal document that actually matters, okay? I want to read from a legal document that actually means something. I want to read from a document that actually gives us all the insight that we need to know and understand exactly what's going on. Because let me tell you what's really happening here. And I'm going to make myself very, very clear as I read this. Here it is. We are looking right now at Ephesians chapter 6. This is the Apostle Paul who says this. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Notice this. This is the verse I want to focus on. Verse 12. Why? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God in the evil day, having done all. What does it say? To stand. We are fighting a spiritual battle here. This is not a legal matter. This is, even if you really think about it, this does not rise to the consequentiality or the inconsequentiality of what might exist in a particular government document, even if it is something as precious as the Constitution. It sits in what God's word says. And what we are talking about here is an invisible war that God continues to remind us. He continues to tell us about these things. The Apostle Paul tells us to stand a whole bunch of times in Ephesians chapter 6. He says, stand therefore, there it is again, right? Having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you were able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me that I might open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Notice this, for which I am in an ambassador in chains that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. You think for a second Jack's scared to go to jail? You think for a second any one of us that speak about these things are worried about these issues? If the Apostle Paul can write a letter like this while he's in jail, getting ready to literally die, how much more should we be bold to speak the truth? instead of being given to the woke industrial complex that wants to continue to murder your children. The woke industrial complex that wants to take away the freedom that you have to be able to preach the gospel and to share the things of God. I mentioned before coming from a mother and father who were born and raised in Egypt, who every single morning woke up to Salatu Khairan min Allah Akbar Muhammad Allah. Five times a day, hearing the call to worship Allah, understanding that there was a consequence for believing and trusting in God. Remember this quote from Samuel Adams. While the people are virtuous, they cannot be subdued, but when once they lose their virtue, they will be ready to surrender their liberties to the first external or internal invader. We're going to lose. We're going to lose our country if we continue to allow these people to do the evil that they're doing. We can no longer allow this. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to stand. We have a greater tool 
than the world has. These liars can continue to lie, but God will prevail in righteousness. Let's fight the good fight, folks. We cannot let this happen to Jack Hibbs. Write to your representatives. Pray, pray, pray. Go to your pastor before Sunday. Tell your pastor about what's going on, that you all may pray together. The enemy wants to do something substantial here, but I think God is going to bring in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, because what these people meant for evil, God is going to take and he's going to use it for good. Let's pay attention to the truth, folks. It's a big deal. God bless you.